TV families Catch us live on your TV screens I'm also looking forward to the president Kwisona Ikazoba Ah, uh, we excel on the 15th of February, Ukalango 8, it repeats in the morning. Otherwise, every other day, it's 4 to 5 p.m. And thank you for choosing us as your source of education, as well as entertainment right here on the Southern Hemisphere. You make us who we are, and we thank you for your love and support. OJJ went to the Red Bull Studios. Um, he chatted to the likes of ODJ Red DD. What they got up to is something very interesting, and I feel like you should take a look so that you are enticed. Let's check it out. not just for us as, as the heads and people involved and for the breakers, but also for the people that's going to do the actual music video. So I know this guy from Good Up FM. Went on his cypher session. It was amazing. And it's DJing, it's rapping, it's b-boying. I feel like the only thing he's short of is the graffiti. You know? So maybe, maybe not. So, Mr. DDD. Tell us about your role and your significance within this project with the BC1 competition. Yeah, sure, man. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And, uh, you know, I just want to salute everybody that's been there right in the beginning, you know, before BC1 and um, Red Bull came along. This culture's been around in South Africa. As far as my um, memory goes, I'm going to take you back to 1979 right now. That's when I was first introduced to hip-hop music. But I firmly believe um, that the roots of this culture is embedded within our African history and heritage, and there's no timeline to it. So, you know, that is just on a philosophical, historical, and a much deeper level. So hip-hop in the form that we know it for, for me personally, um, I was introduced to that to, um, you know, in 1979, about a year and a half before we were forcefully removed from District 6 due to the previous apartheid government's, yeah. you know, um, forced removals, um, rules and regulations. So during that timeline, the first song I was um, listening to was a song called uh, Rapper's Delight by the Shoegill Gang. Okay, okay. And then Curtis Blow at the same time with that whole album, The Breaks. So that was my introduction. I, I could immediately relate to the music because as a kid, I grew up with that sound. You know, my father played disco, reggae, punk, soul. Um, everything from jazz, blues, Lang Aram Klopp, some music, Guma music, you name it. Yeah. I was exposed to all of that as a kid. Then when we were relocated to Lentechi and Mitchell's Plain, that's when the, the rest of the, of, the, of the puzzle started to fall in place. Okay. So one of the kids that grew up in, in my neighborhood in District 6 is now known as the very famous DJ Rosano X. Um, his mom and dad owned a video machine, and he used to record all these music videos mm -hmm. for um, TV. And then the first full-blown b-boy hip-hop hip-hop culture video that I've seen was a was a video by an artist called Malcolm McLaren. So this guy okay. was a, quite an avant-garde musician from the UK. He went to New York to go and cover the hip-hop culture. So in this video, they had b-boys breaking. They had graffiti artists, um, you know, doing their pieces. They had all these characters in the video dancing with like really funny painted faces and all these things DJs were scratching. I could relate to that because I grew up with all of that, you know, as a kid. But at the time, I didn't know it's hip-hop music, it's hip-hop culture. Yeah, so yeah. we were breaking and doing whatever we did, not even knowing what this thing was called. So as the story started to break in mainstream media, we learned this whole thing is called hip-hop and it's hip-hop culture. And then I was like, okay, that's why... The guys in the Rapper's Delight opened up the song with hip, hop, hip to the hip, to the hip, hip. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now yeah. you start putting all the pieces together. Now remember, there's no internet, there's no cell phones, there's none of these that social is why media he's platforms. That's so respected, <laughs> man. <laughs> so we were, we were going through an era of discovery. 
and we had to put all the pieces together and we could only mimic what we've seen on TV and try to figure things out for ourselves. But do you see why I say you you, you, <laughs> you started this whole thing? <laughs> no, I, I would say I was an early contributor, but I didn't start this. Ah, no, I there play was, now, I'm both there, there, was, there was a massive community all over Cape Town that were involved. You know, so we were quite active in Mitchell Spain. Okay. Then other crews were active elsewhere. You know, um, if you look at Emil and Black Noise and all those guys, they were out in the Lotus, Grassy Park region, also doing their thing, until competition started to come up. And that's how we started to learn. There was actually other crews elsewhere in Cape Town City, specifically on the Cape Flats. So we were the crew from Mitchell's Plain, and we had homies out in Langa that used to break in Park and Lock with us back then. And back then, the culture was on the street. Everything was vibrant that was on the street. We used to battle on the streets, break on the street, practice on the street, bust our knees open on the street, freaking have blood flowing from our heads, whatever the case may be. <laughs> it sounds intense. Trying to get, you know, trying yeah, to yeah. learn all these movements, breaking our parents' hi-fi systems, um, you know, landing in big trouble because <laughs> of the way we used to handle and scratch the vinyl and all those things. But it was all part of discovery. And all of this is during the dark days of apartheid as well. So as a kid, you want to be up in the street, you want to walk from one area to the next in Mitchell's Plain, you know, to go and battle and dance and just, you know, be yeah, the yeah, exactly. Then you have to run from gangs and you have to run from the army that's coming at you with their freaking guns and everything else. So that was the era in which we grew up in. I know? mean, you see that as, 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 as like, you know, paving the way to do I see it as sacrifices. You didn't even know what you were doing, but you guys keep doing it. And today you are, I don't know, I'm going to say it and you're not going to deny this. You <laughs> are a legend, my friend. Thank you you are one of the most important people for me from Cape Town. or in you like the godfather wow. of, of, of this. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for you, I mean, you have a big influence on Youngster. Shout out Youngster. You know, YG. You know what I'm saying? So you have a big influence on his career as well, uh, as, from, as, as far as what I know, because you guys are working together a lot. And that's all that. right, yeah. But uh, Ready D, that's all the time we have for today. For your interview. Sorry that it was so short. I wish I get more good. time with you. Uh, maybe on another day <laughs> or about another something. But you're the guys that stuck and stayed. You th made Thank all you the so sacrifices. Much, so you deserve to be in the position yeah. that you're in right now. Thank you. And I, I just have to salute Red Bull on this. You know, if it's not for them, this culture wouldn't be where it's at in this country. I would say on, on, on so many different levels and platforms. So it's Red, uh, Red Bull's BC1 South African cycle. This is what we're here to do. And we're here to celebrate. And we're here to make happen. So these guys have definitely... Yes. Has played a massive, massive role in helping to, um, you know, to get the culture elevated and to get it on a different platform. So big ups, man! Shout out to Rebel. Shout out everyone who made this possible. Shout out to BC One and the BC One soundtrack that you're gonna hear very, very, very soon. So we're gonna go to another ad and then we'll be back with some more. Exit.